The third and last in this panel uh, will be Alexei Smirnov from Technical Support Division of Rockers. Uh, he will tell us about uh, UAS data processing retrospective, looking at UAV data processing retrospectively. Quite a lot of time has passed since the advent of UAVs or drones. You can do engineering, geological surveys, create maps. So I have taken a retrospective look at the de developmental track of uh, UAC technology, providing insights into future, potential future development, and this is something I wanted to share with you. In my presentation, I will provide you with very early investigations into unmanned aerial systems. Then uh, uh, the next milestone is the end of the 20th century or the year 2000 and uh, anything that followed 2000 and that's when we got some serious development you could say it was a boom based on uh, these materials I will tell you about reviews conducted on Rakros side UAS review software reviews I'll share with you the common trends perceivable at this very moment from users' perspective. I mean, what is the view of users on UAS? And then I'll share with you my personal view, an imagination or fantasy, if you will, of my own. So some st steps allowing us to uh, build projections. What is photogrammetry? If we translate from Greek, changing um, the rec gamma recording, originally it was mentioned in Lambert's works. It was a manuscript. Then uh, Mikhail Lamanosov suggested using those uh, uh, manuscripts to put together mm, survey maps. You can see it's, it's the same manuscript canvases. Uh, then uh, a French uh, professor Arago so proposed uh, to use images to create photomagrammatic maps. And then the very early idea of photogrammetry appeared. Gaspard Toshon, known as Nadal, has uh, uh, used an aerial balloon for first aerial survey. And after that, uh, Lazard uh, performed a photo serving from a roof of a building. Approximately in the early 19th century, ideas started to appear as to how to remotely survey the land, pr primarily th by using kites or birds with cameras attached to them or self-made rockets. In Russia, the first survey was undertaken in uh, 1886 uh, by Koyan Ko from an air balloon for topographic purposes. The first UAV experience came from the military field. Mr. Lyaninkov 
Ulyanin developed his own camera, designed his own camera, and he put it up on a sail, and then he used special box kites you can see on the right picture. Uh, then the camera uh, was pulled to the very top of the kite, uh, allowing to start serving. What did they use? What kind of instruments were used for processing? Back in the day, they used primarily mechanical instruments uh, manufactured at Carl Zeiss factory. The only peculiarity was that they take took three points at X, Y, Z axes. Uh, then a Russian uh, specialist uh, took this uh, technology further and the early references to a radio controlled devices came during Tesla times. He created a radio controlled UAV, then American Kettering did the same uh, for intelligence purposes. And in the middle 20th century, British, the British used UAVs uh, for military intelligence during the war. The entire century was all about military intelligence due to events everybody knows about. So UAVs were not used for civilian purposes. There were some Russian designs and developments later. These are automatic models that carried out military intelligence, reconnoiter, if you will. But all these models were one-offs, one use only. The assumption was they will not come back. And if they did, uh, long-term repairs were necessary to fix them. But mechanical instruments continued to improve, giving way uh, to other applications like creating maps. So we're talking about transformers, stereo projectors. The measurement accuracy improved as well. This is a stereo comparator. In the middle of the century, they could measure the point uh, to five microns accuracy. Then they continue to improve to analytical level, so it's not about data capture collection, but also doing an analysis. The modern UAV world is represented in aircrafts, um, helicopter and multi-copter. The main features providing insights into uh, performance of UAV, UAS are weight, size, and shape. It will tell you what kind of equipment it will be able to lift and carry, and uh, how difficult or easy it will be to use a given camera on a particular a UAS. So this is a multi-copter, helicopter. I'll show you how these models developed from the start date of sale. Practically all UAVs in the 20th century uh, were designed by amateurs. Amateurish I know of no commercial company in Europe or in Russia that would c manufacture a UAV at large design bureaus. So that meant that initially they were used for tests, for experiments. 
Then they continued to develop further, and those companies that realized that uh, they could market those and uh, make profit, they started adapting them for mapping applications. In Russia, one of the flagship companies is Ptero that uh, manufactures UAVs specifically for, f for mapping purposes. So they started with uh, electrical elements and uh, moved on to fuel elements. This is Finko company, represented uh, uh, by Tatiana Gennadievna, and it has very good performance rate, good productivity, which we also discussed. These are the main models used mostly in Russia and uh, that come up uh, on uh, magazine articles or at exhibitions. These are sense flights, which Professor Grun also used in his works. Trimble company that we referred to today as well, which uh, bought off Constant Gaining Win to add a UAV line for investigative purposes. So there is a wide variety of models now, and the reviews are available for those. Uh, this is as far as aircraft UA UAS image uh, usage is concerned. I mean, the penetration rate is much higher with aircraft as a factor of productivity. Based on this review and based on the uh, developmental trajectory before, one could uh, go ahead and classify uh, models for various uh, mapping purposes. Now, about software. Mechanical and an analytical instruments gradually progressed and upgraded to software level. This has changed the paradigm entirely and changed mindsets. So these are the, the main programs, the main software programs that can process UAS captured images to varying degrees. Now, what can one say about them? Practically all the programs rely on the same photogrammetric process. The photogrammetric process is common for all of them. Now let's look at the products of the software. Again, they are very much the same. Orthophoto, DSM, DTM, 3D models, stereo vectorization in some cases. But what is the essential difference? The essential difference is that the software that uh, was created decades ago is more tailored to classical surveying. Some functions are needed for control. The new software lacks those because it's fully automatic. They did a good job of bringing automation to the process, but because of the lacking controls function, in some situations we get a result which we cannot predict from the beginning. It's kind of out of control at times. The primary st development stages concerned triangulation. First, they started with uh, correlators based on uh, conventional or, or classical uh, imaging. They used area correlators. Later, when we started using UAVs, we encountered quality-related person uh, problems because UAVs mostly use um, non-professional cameras, which cannot guarantee quality at all times. Uh, 
plus uh, we got a lot of images with angular evolutions i mean from image to image um, you got uh, divergences heavy divergences but they come up with uh, correlators uh, that can fix that and most of the software has now included this in their package in their suites what are the problems or challenges of uh, cameras first of all external factors you can never be left assured that if you uh, launch a UAV it's going to deliver what you want given the speeds weather whatnot what do these external factors affect they affect the quality you get blurred images noisy images cheaper models lead to lack of focus beyond our control plus when it comes to uh, slit shutters which most of the cameras have uh, and lack of calibration if we use a camera in the far north the results may not be what we want and a lot of pressure will be put on digital photogrammetric uh, program which uh, has uh, self-calibration but still no guarantees so the conclusion is laboratory calibration is a prerequisite it's needed at all times now let's talk about lenses all how non-professional cameras amateur cameras have their own lenses so there are a lot of uh, distortions on the edge this is a typical case an aerial photo has been taken by nex 5 and uh, along the edges uh, we can see uh, distortions in the amount of 63 pixels if we happen to use unmanned aerial system we need to think of planning a flight UAV is small it shakes a lot in the wind and in most of cases it does not use fully adapted uh, technology it flies the way it wants not the way we want it to fly uh, therefore planning is necessary as it we as without this you'll get incorrect aerial surveying and the only way to fix it is to do another fly this is a picture showing how uh, a camera works in one route a couple of minutes and you can see that this is the kind of images that you can be getting practically in each and every project I mean it's unmanageable and then again that uh, puts pressure on a photogrammetric system the main output products are the same as with other kinds of uh, serving DSM orthophoto plans if you use US right then you can get uh, one to two pixel accuracy in all programs other trends include point cloud vector 3d models raster 3d models so it's your a classical ortho photo spread over or stretched over uh, the matrix of relief and uh, stereo vectorization so it's a 3d map uh, with a height object now let's talk about business market shares it seems like the aerial survey data processing result interpretation and the uh, 
their control and a further introduction as well as enterprise JS system is something that nobody wants. Practically all the offices that want to use UAVs for themselves, they want to have an end product. And they don't want to think about how you received it, what UAVs were used, what software was utilized. The main reason for that was that, first of all, people want to have a assembly line project without, you know, a full continuation. And UAVs are very good for that because they can arrange this continuity. And secondly is the cutting of costs because UAVs mean cost effectiveness, less number of people, operators and professionals who usually cost a lot and are quite expensive. In this case, all the UAV companies are saying that they can do everything in automatic mode, so automatic acquisition. This is the main trend now. At the same time, this trend, unfortunately, still doesn't describe the consequences of uh, the acquired results and the future now. If we try to follow the whole value chain that I've just showed to you, my fantasy and how it can manifest itself in future and it's a full automatic package of processing, including the actual acquisition, of course, when we press the button, basically it launches the UAV apparatus, it hovers over the side that we need, it can be quite a vast one, um, we can have a flight plan for a number of years ahead of us and uh, then they do acquisition and upload this into the cloud and that's where the materials are processed with automatic reporting, archiving, and in fact the user gets the end product without having uh, any knowledge of how it was acquired, but it was tested and uh, still you shouldn't trust your computer 100%. Still we don't have not a single system of interpretation of anything, interpretation of images or interpretation of sound or human voice or human writing. All these processes are done with the uh, accuracy rate less than 100%. That's why the control management of this information is going to develop as well. Ne then on the this images, I suggested that the management of this information is going to be done in full virtual mode when we won't have neither monitors nor keyboard or mouse or disks. We'll have everything in hand when we'll be just present there and manage this information, raise it and uh, edit it and use it subsequently for our goals like planning, building, construction and so on and so forth in full accordance with your fantasy, so to say. This report was developed with the assistance from people who uh, deserve a lot of credit for this information, for discussions, for the food for thought. And uh, again, here we have Natalia Gennadievna. She's one of those people. Thank you very much. That's it. Thank you. I'm ready to take your questions now.